What happens when you get a very wet growing season in 1992 combined with record-breaking rains in 1993? Well, the answer to that question is diseases, diseases, and more diseases showing up in the landscape. According to Jeanette Jacobs, our plant disease diagnostician here at OSU, she tells us that the disease is really coming in and there's a high rate of disease showing up in landscape because of all of these wet conditions. Now remember, before disease can ever occur, it has to have three or four conditions that are just appropriate before they'll ever show up. And first of all, you have to have the pathogen present, and that's pretty much a common in many cases. You also have to have the right growing conditions, and that may be moisture, certain temperatures. You obviously have to have the host or the plant, and in many cases, you have to have certain number of days or time for the disease to show up. Well, we've had a lot of appropriate growing conditions. We've got the host and the pathogen and the time, and we are seeing all kinds of leaf spots. And I've got several different examples to show you here, and most of them are referred to in a common name as a leaf spot, although keep in mind that there's different pathogens that are causing these symptoms. And let me show you some of the ones that are showing up in quite common. First of all, on irises, we see what is called an iris leaf spot. The symptoms are spots that you'll notice like this that kind of look like they have an eye in the center of them. It's a darker reddish color with kind of a grayish speck right in the center. Again, it looks more like an eye. That's on irises. On our trees, we've got several different ones. This is a mulberry tree. It's a weeping mulberry that we have here at OBGA. Again, it's called a Cercospora leaf spot as a pathogen. It's kind of reddish brown spots that have almost a yellow halo on the other underneath side. And that's one thing you need to look at diseases on both sides of the leaves in many cases because it may look a little bit different on each side depending on what disease it is, but dark red with a yellow halo. Yucca is one that we don't see a lot of problems on, although this year we have also Cercospora leaf spot showing up on the yucca. It's almost a purplish dark color with a lighter center. And if you think about it, once these spots continue to grow together, you can lose an entire leaf or foliage depending on what type of plant. Here's one on oak called oak leaf blister. And it's not uncommon for us to see galls on oak trees that cause certain growths, but this is actually caused from a fungus called tephrina or tephrina, and it's called oak leaf blister because on the underneath side of the leaves, it's actually swollen a little bit to give it a blistering effect, and then it has a lighter margin around those particular circles. And you can see that lighter color on this side, but it's actually smoother, and that's why checking it on each side. Again, a disease versus an insect. On elm, we have one showing up that's called elm black spot. You can also get other leaf spots on elm, but this particular one, the spots are very small, and they're black in color. Again, you can see them on each side of the leaf. Once they continue to grow, the same problem, the leaves will start to drop off. And one that's very common on sycamores, but also on some maples, is called anthracnose. Again, a fungus disease normally starting along the veins, and it causes it to die out like this or become necrotic. But many cases, it will have a scorched appearance because as it spreads along the vein, it will go to the margins and cause the entire leaf to, to deform and drop off. Another different type of uh, leaf spot on maples is called phyllosticta. If you look underneath, you don't see it as much. It's more water-soaked appearance, but the top, it shows up a little bit more with these uh, water-soaked lesions. As they continue to mature, it will turn necrotic. You'll see spots and it'll drop out, uh, very similar to anthracnose and some of the other leaf spots that you'll see. And then one on our conifers or evergreens on pines is called a pine needle blight. And once you look on the needle, it actually you'll see a little ring, which would be a spot. It's just a different shape of foliage. And it will continue to spread. And sometimes it's even further down the needle. And wherever it dies, it basically girdles it. And the pine needle will die from that point out. And you can imagine looking at an entire pine tree. It may look like it's burned some way. When you get closer, you'll see each of these little spots that have actually done the number on it. Now again, all of these are referred to as leaf spots. Some of the pathogens are different. 
but they have different symptoms. Some of them are the same, but affect different types of trees and shrubs. The thing that you need to remember is once a disease is present and the conditions are right, it may be spreading to new growth. Once it dries out during the summer, the disease may go inactive. So what we're telling you is once the spots are on the leaves, you're not going to be able to get rid of them. Uh, they're basically going to just have to drop off the tree. Uh, the best way to control is sanitation. Anytime leaves drop, rake them up, dispose of them because they'll reinfect themselves that way. And next year, when the leaves start to unfurl and come out, then you have to do preventative sprays. And usually the sprays that are registered for these types of foliar leaf diseases are like copper products, like Bordeaux mixture, or just copper sprays. Four, diphane, daconil, and topsin are some of the most common ones. And you have to do them every 7, 10 to 14 days, depending upon uh, the label for your particular plant. Now remember again, these leaves are not going to heal up. They're going to drop off, so sanitation is very important. Now on one of the diseases, the oak leaf blister, you can actually get some control by putting on a dormant spray before the leaves ever start to come out, and then follow up with the fungicides once the leaves unfurl, and that will help you get it under control. Now a couple of more diseases I want to show you that are not too common, but this year happen to be very common. On purple leaf plum and also on some fruit trees, it's called black knot fungus. Again, it's not a gall. It's a fungus disease that causes this black growth on particular prunus species. And really the only way to control it is to prune it out, dispose of that again. You don't want to leave it on the ground because it's a source for reinfection. But it, we found that in commercial orchards where they're on a preventative or a spray schedule, they very seldom have this. It's usually on homeowner trees where they're not spraying at all. So just a regular spray schedule with fungicides will help control that. And another very unusual one that also sometimes is blamed on an insect that shows up on azaleas during wet conditions is called azalea leaf gall. This is a particular fungus again, and it's kind of different from all the other ones we've talked about in that it's very difficult to control with a spray. So really all you can do is pick these galls off, again dispose of them, burn them, uh, compost them and make sure your compost is hot enough, but once you start seeing this white growth on the galls, you'll actually uh, be a little bit late and the chances are it's already spreading to other new growth or the inoculum is there for next year. So it's just a blistering of the leaf that's real rubbery like, but it's a fungus instead of an insect. So again, sanitation is very important. And many of these diseases you can live with and they won't ever harm your trees. Others, it will continue to build up year after year and it can shorten the life of your tree and in some cases kill them. So you need to do your homework, your research, check fact sheets, get with your county extension professionals. And if you decide you need to spray, really this year we're too late unless you're getting new growth out. You'll have to do it next year as a preventative right when the leaves start coming out during those wet, wet spring conditions.